Hi, my name is Todd Lamley, and welcome to Module 13, IPv6. Please don't stress out, IPv6 is my friend. Just repeat after me, IPv6 is my friend. It is not that hard. It is actually harder to lecture on, harder for you to read, than it is actually to configure and make work in an internet network. So the concepts behind it can be kind of convoluted or might sound like that, and I'll try to make them as simple as possible. But I'll show you how easy it is to put on a router and how easy it is for hosts to work through IPv6. If we actually had IPv6 out now, our networks would be running a lot more smoother and more efficient. So we're going to go ahead and take a look in this module how IPv6, of course, extends the address range from IP version 4 and makes our networks run more efficient. I'm going to finish with the lab where I'm going to connect two routers together running IPv6. And I really encourage you to read my chapter 13. IPv6 in the Cybex CCNA study guide uh, or in study IPv6 from any other source if you don't have my book. But I do hope you do. Now, if you have been following along and you've done the other 12 modules and this is your 13th module, I encourage you to stay the course. We've only got two more modules. This module is not that hard. So I'm going to go through there and you could watch this more than once. And then we only have one more module after this. So hang tight. Let's go through IP version 6. Now let's take a look and compare an IP version 4 address. As we can see, it's 32 bits long. Well, an IP version 6 address is a little bit longer, which causes a lot of stress and duress for people, doesn't it? An IP address would look something like this, 192.168.201.13, or an IPv6 address would look like this because it's done in hexadecimal. It's 128 bits. But for IP version 4, we only get 1.3 billion, about 4 billion addresses, IPv4 addresses available. But we get a few more with IP version 6, 3.4 times 10 to the 38th IP addresses. If you want to know how many that is, please use your calculator. Anyways, so we have to figure out what's the best way to do addressing. And I'm going to show you the best way. There are a couple different ways to address both a router and host. And what I'm going to show you is the easy way. I highly recommend if you have routers that you configure IP version 6 and connect up hosts and make them work and or have them use. If you have a Mac, a latest Mac, or you have uh, XP Service Pack 2, you can put IPv6 on there. Or Vista obviously runs it. And like I was saying, the Mac automatically runs it as well. So in the background of Vista and Server 2008, they're going to run uh, IP version 6. And if you run just IP version 6 between those two boxes, you get a lot more throughput. I'll talk about that later in a little bit in this module. Why do we need a larger address space? Do I really even need to talk about this? Our internet population is approximately 973 million users and that was in 2005 and really China hasn't even come online. So if you think about China coming online, it's just not feasible, is it? So we have an emerging population um, and most of the internet is the United States. It's like 70 percent of all the IP addresses in the world are used in the United States. There's of course now we get more mobile users and approximately 20 million in 2004 were mobile and so we're a lot more now. I would say it's a, a lot more. I don't know what it is, but it would be a lot more than that. Um, but remember that your cell phones are probably going to get IP addresses and we can't do that with IP version 4. They're going to have to get IP version 6 addresses. So think about all the cell phones in just the United States alone and trying to get IP version 4 addresses on there. Not really feasible. Mobile phones. As I've already said, 1 billion mobile phones to, uh, delivered to the industry. We certainly could do this with IP version 6 without an issue. Transportation. Uh, that's another thing. In 2008 and this year, they're going to start uh, uh, sending out cars after they manufacture them with IP addresses on them. No less than 15, maybe 20 IPv6 addresses. This is for maintenance issues. So you know how you can go out and look. So there was that Carfax, I think it was, something like that. We can say, tell me all about this car. Well, that's not always true. That's only what was reported to the insurance companies. But if we have IP version 6 addresses, there's no line. When it comes off the, the assembly line, everything is recorded. How many times the, uh, the tires rotated, uh, the engine, when it was, the oil was changed, when it was serviced, everything from beginning to end will be recorded inside that car and there's no line about the car any longer. And this is going to happen this year. Internet access for planes. Um, I don't think this has happened fast enough. This really isn't that difficult to do, but for some reason they just haven't done it yet. Most of it's going to be satellite communications. 
but they're going to communicate via to probably a router in the plane, and that's what Lestanza has done. And then from there, you have a router that sends out basic wireless technologies in the 2.4 gigahertz range. Or there, I heard that some planes were going to have RJ45 in their seats. I guarantee that's probably only going to be in business in first class, but uh, we'll see. But we really need this. So all of Sony's devices are IPv6 enabled, have been for a long time. Billions of home and industrial appliances. In Japan, they have bathtubs that have 10 uh, IPv6 addresses. So it's going to monitor your water usage, the, the heat, the amount of soap, and so on. All of this is monitored. Your appliances, like your refrigerator, will have an IPv6 address and send to the electric company information about it. So when you get your electric bill, it's going to say your washer used this much electricity, your dryer used this much, and your refrigerator used this much. And we're not talking about years off. This is here available now. Some IPv6 advanced features are larger address space, as we know, um, to give us a lot of features, a lot of different features. And by the way, remember we talked about NAT? We don't use NAT anymore with IPv6. Let me talk to you about some of the other benefits of IPv6 that I didn't mention yet. You don't have to do DHCP, you don't have to do subnetting, and you don't have to do NAT. That's just the beginning. Now, you can do all of those things, but you don't have to. So if I said, gosh, you didn't have to go through Module 3, I know you're about to pull your hair out now, now that I said that, um, you don't have to go through the NAT module, you don't have to do any DHCP, all of, all of IPv6 can be auto-configured, and the routers would use inside and outside addresses, kind of like we used with NAT, but they'll do it automatically.